I need to switch over. Yeah. Okay, yeah, on. let me get the map all lined up here so I know what I'm talking. I think it's Yeah, it's these it's these guys, right? What? No. Is it? It is. Is that the zigzag? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's where it's at. It's chilling right. Woo. <laughs> take the elevator. Yeah, take the I'm, elevator. I'm good. Good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> totally good. Give me. All right, I'm going to switch it and then we can go. Okay. Oops, yeah, your lady looks like she's dead in the eyes. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Little miss dead in the eyes. All right. Good to go there, buddy. Yes, sir. All right, so hopefully this isn't terribly dark for everybody. Uh, we are slowly waiting for the sun to come. Uh, we're currently playing uh, Daisy. I have hopefully coming to the console soon enough, right? This is, what, the 25th of September. And, uh, yeah, so I know console versions are currently on 104, but there's big changes coming for 105 and for future versions, not only for base building, which makes us really think, well, okay, so one of the big things that's coming in at 105 is vaulting. <laughs> You're rolling around. <laughs> is vaulting. And a lot of people have asked us, hey, what does that do to, to the player built walls and towers? Well, you can vault over lots of things like fences like this, which I've oh, shown yeah. in many, many videos. But apparently if you build a wall, even if it's a low wall, players cannot vault over it. Now, if one of these walls were thick enough, and this one might be, and you were able to place a a fence kit on top, you would actually stop somebody from climbing over. But anyways, that brings up an interesting point that we have thought about and actually done a few times. And we're going into base builds, but we came across this uh, thinking about not only the meta for building and base bases in general for 104, but for 105 and for future versions. Our more internal versions or more naturally fortified locations. I guess I'll put this on so at least I've got a chest. Yeah, some type of light. light yeah. Yeah. All right. So this build is definitely focused on a larger group. It's like three, four players possibly. I don't. I mean, I guess you could do this solo, but that's a pretty big undertaking. But uh, we're currently sitting in. Let's see. Is it is it Novo? So if you type that into your search, N O V O, and this is right above Cherno City. So a lot of the times we cut Cherno in half with this railroad tracks. We have Cherno City here that I'm circling and then Cherno Industrial, which is all called Cherno. And if you've been watching me long enough, you know we have orange over here. Whoops, didn't mean to click that. Did not mean to click that. Orange <laughs> over here. So Electro's way over there. So this resides right up here, and Dubkey Apartments are right off yonder. So I, we, the more we've been walking around here, the more I've been checking this out, the more I like this location. So again, you can search it for N-O-V-O. And I'm, I'm hoping that we have enough daylight here, but let's go ahead and walk up. I think so. I think we got enough daylight for this. So right away, you can tell that this area's got the high ground. Now, there's a lot of built, and I don't necessarily terrible thing. Like, yes, it could be an issue initially when you start off, but let's be honest. Let's say you have a group of, like, six people, right? Four people. Once you fortify one structure, you can start to fortify the others, right? Like this series of buildings here on the right, the oh, one yeah. here in the middle, or even these side towers. Well, For let's sure. try the one on the end first. We'll start, because it's always start small, then go big. And we simultaneously just pull out our shovels. <laughs> Hopefully the sun comes up for us. Should. I hope so. We're good. We got enough. We get. We got enough daylight. It doesn't look too dark on mine, so we should be alright. Alright, so you can start off on a building like this, and honestly, I think one. Well, we'll just get up there. So you've already seen. We've done a couple build. Sick. You could start off by roping off this entryway, which I wouldn't recommend initially. 
the benches and the way these concrete slabs come down or these dumpsters to make it hard to rope off. Like you have to, oh geez, you have to make it wider than you want it to start with. So I'd highly recommend, uh, get worked. I'd highly recommend starting off with uh, an interior gate or even an obstruction of some sort. Did I, let me whip out my old bingo. So as you come up here, come on now. Should be able to place uh, one of the gates in this uh, hallway here, and it yeah, it should fit. I think it's wide enough. Well, once you have uh, your fence kit out, you can hit up on the D-pad, PlayStation, and the Xbox, and it'll start to rotate it. Now, I'm not sure if we can fit it in this hallway, but one of the hallways you can definitely fit it in. So, if you can fit a, a fence kit there, then you can turn it into a gate. As you start to go up so you can create all these different airlocks as you go up and as we found in some of the other builds once we get to the top here you can also create a gate go ahead and walk up there try not to barf create more doorways more gates you can create little loot pockets here you do it on uh, a number of occasions a number of builds as you see us play on the console all the time we did this a lot in 102 done it in 104 you know how we, you know how we do it. Oh yeah, I, I'm a big fan of loot pockets inside of buildings. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do, especially when you're building. Um, especially when you have like a, a big squad of people, you kind of want to start separating the loot and organizing it. At least that's me with OCD. I mean, you could spread it out however you want, but um, this type of location, when you start really cracking down and get towards the end game with your gear, your ghillie, your cars, uh, your sea chests, your barrels, everything. You, a location like this, like Jade's saying, is you want to make airlocks going all the way up, if you can, if it's provided, you know, having enough room in it. And you want to kind of like, just be able to rope off any area, right? So, obviously, like Jade's saying, beginning you want to rope off you know the bottom and just start one airlock right just one gate you're good to go that's the cheapest way to go that's the most efficient way to go because when you're first starting off with a big squad and you want to move to a different base location you want to be able to have a base cheaply built until you can gather enough mats to uh, fortify your area I know right if I just have yeah so one of the reasons why we say any of these buildings would do but uh, oftentimes um, in future builds let's say in one we're not allowed to put gates down in those hallways you can definitely put one up here at the top put a fence get here you can start to create airlocks off this doorway uh, you have a lockable door here which is more to slow people down, more or less, because of uh, the fact that we can actually beat down doors now with melee. Well, we've had that in 104, but we're currently ex um, showing this in 105. But um, one of the downsides to this is the fact that anybody in the valley will be able to see the silhouette on top of this building, including at nighttime. This one silhouettes a lot. So you're once you build on the roof, you're letting everybody know you're here. Now, if you start in on the interior as we suggested to not do any ex exterior walls here, but you do everything inside and, and create your little loot pockets and prefabrication stuff, like uh, you know, you're getting all your logs together, do them in the apartment section so nobody can see you. Try not to put tents up here until you're ready to really make a foothold and a large footprint here because it's you're gonna attract anybody in this area. And this is a high traffic area. I mean, looking back at the map, this is close to a jump zone, which is around here. Mm -hmm. It's close to the shoreline where people are going to move in and start to loot. You've got these loot camps here, a loot camp here, a load of airstrip over here. So people are going to be around here. You're going to hear a lot of action. There are people are going to come around. And if they're anywhere where this cursor is at, they're going to see this building, oh, which yeah. isn't necessarily bad. No, it's not bad. It's just the reason for the high traffic area is because, okay, let's face it, you are able to be, build here with your squad, right? 
you guys get together, you guys all like BSing, and you want to start grinding out and getting that really top tier end game base, right? This is what you look for with it for a squad base. Now, when you're looking over here, you got you got a military camp up that road. You also have a water well within this little tiny town that's below us, and then. Uh, what Jade was pointing out earlier before we went over this is there's actually visibly, visibly with a scope or binoculars, there are three s car spawns in the area. Ah, uh, yes. So you have what? Your food, your water, your cars, right? That you need to travel. And then you have a military camp close. And we have one of our favorite base locations that are up the road, it's the power plant uh, that we have both went over before. But, like I said before in prior, like, squad base build videos, this right here is probably one of your, I would say, one of the best locations due to the fact of the transportation that spawns around you, along with having a lot of these little towns to loot through. Um, yeah, obviously, you got the high ground. That's great. Anybody kind of sieging the bottom, you can pick off as they come up to you. And like Jade was pointing out earlier, although you are, uh, although you do have like the high ground advantage for people that are close to you, there is these valleys. People with tundras, lars, stuff like that, with good scopes, they're gonna be able to see it. And you want to double stack that wall. Once you get up here and you know you want to start building up here, you got to make that decision. Am I fortified enough at the bottom first? Then you start moving in all the big stuff, your tents and whatnot. And let's face it too, right? You get all these car spawns here. You could build between these buildings here, these apartments. And you can make your own, like, you can fabricate your own garage, you know? Put some watchtowers in the area. And let's face it, there's so many f apartments here, and what I've noticed from kind of a, like a tactical standpoint when you're looking at DayZ squad base builds, is that you have different levels of apartments. Each one has a different, uh, is built on a different level of ground, right? So, who's to say you can't put little watchtowers on each one of these buildings in order to be able to watch the, uh, surrounding area for incoming player traffic as you progress through day Z. Well, check this out to kind of uh, build off what you were saying earlier. Not only uh, can you get yeah, optics for any of your uh, you can see I think it's was it six spawns. There's one here that's inland. Uh -huh. The statues represents towards the shoreline there. And to the right of the statue over here by these other apartments is like below the direction. Um, let's go ahead and bring up the map here. So we've got back here represents where we're standing. Oh, I'm sorry. This represents where we're standing. So we can see Dubkey Apartments Oh yeah. here. We might have a hard time seeing this one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spawns. Excuse me. Seven spawns. What? Like in the, in the local area. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. You have food because you have these different residential areas, which seems to be some of the negatives for some of the other builds that we've done. But you can start small internally, so you're not leaving a big footprint, as you were saying, Razor. And as you start to get bigger, especially if you have a squad, like once you start to boom, I mean, you've seen us boom multiple times, 102, 104, like because we usually roll with a big squad over on uh, on the Xbox, but. Like, once you feel that this is secure, you can have your other group of people be like, yeah, let's start taking the other buildings. Yeah. Right? And that oh, just yeah. becomes your own loot towers. And especially with this exciting news that the base building is going to get a revamp. To, oh, yeah. It sounds like maybe something between the way it is now and the way the mod servers work, which make it more robust. Um, yeah, like, the like people are really going to have to work to get in here. Like, it's not going to be easy. Uh, the duct tape glitch is not going to exist. So it makes it... um. It makes you look at stuff differently. And you want to make sure that you're doing it on the cheap because, as you know, with nails being valuable now, they're harder enough, right? Like, yeah. you get them at first, but once you spend them, yikes. Yeah. Well, the good th the, the, the takeaway you want to get from this video, right? The 
takeaway you want is, uh, let's face it, in Daisy, prefabricated things are the way to go. There, are, I mean, yeah, you could build your base from the bottom up with walls and all this, all this crap, right? You could just build it up, build this big base in the middle of a field somewhere, and whatever. But let's face it, who's gonna win? The guy that's built over here in the middle of the field that built his base from the ground up, or the guy that built inside a prefabricated apartment with 30 different rooms that are locked individually with a lock pick that has one door that you can't break inside, and then all of a sudden you find out he has 10 doors within this prefabricated structure to where you can't even get to the top, and that's where all his major loot is. I mean, I think I'm winning when it comes to prefabricated... Uh, you know, that's just one bases. building. Yeah, this, this what happens when you expand with your crew to the next building, like right next to it. And let's face it, if you do take over a building with this size, uh, this size of this magnitude, this is a good springboard into start starting to experiment, like your transportation and like taking cars out into the distance with the material you gather gather from this local area start building different types of fobs all over uh, the map and this is kind of like your your headquarters you know and then you could start dispersing loot and then you know you have a guaranteed way to mitigate some of that damage uh, from the survival aspect uh, that the devs have put in place with the game you know what I mean which yeah, I don't know this this building, the buildings like this, man, they they really, really get me going. The builds like this. Yeah, they become their own strongholds in their own right. Mm -hmm. If we step downstairs, you can kind of see, and you can pick any one of these. Obviously, early. I mean, you've always seen us in almost every build we do. We're like, look, start small, then go big, because if you take off more than you can, oh, I almost fell down that shaft again. If you take out more than... Oh, I can't... I slid in there by accident. Yeah, I almost took a ride downstairs. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Woo. What is it with me falling down the elevator shafts? I don't know. I was like... It was like a magnetism thing. Like, okay, so if you had six people, maybe you could take over this bigger block. I'm sorry. These, this is the standalone. This is the one we were just looking at. Uh, there's another standalone right here. But then there's a double over here maybe you're big enough to do that you know go for it but just remember you have two entrances you have to deal with because people can always go all the way up this tower and then cross the rooftop and then come down through the top so you've got more points to to cover up but uh, again you've seen us do it multiple times on almost every version uh even with a smaller group we go big and hard fast yeah that sounds really bad but here uh this is what razor was talking about earlier just to kind of see it in context and that's an excellent point yeah, you, once you've got this tower secured, you can create a small car pen down here. Like, and then once you've got like little towers in here in between, um, you can stick tents in between here. You can stick uh, oh, yeah. vehicle pens. And look, this has got cover. These have trees in the way. So who's going to see that? You know what I mean? Well, not only that, but like, even if you want to like kind of play mind games with people, especially when it comes to PvP and stuff, I'm not a big fan of keeping my loot in the same area I live. Like, I like, obviously, food and necessities I have near me at all times. Like cars and stuff. Who's to say I don't build a fake car pin there and then I don't stash my car up there in the mountain in the woods? I mean, there's a lot of different things you could do with a build like this. I mean, and I'm not going to get too much into it because obviously we were just kind of going over this single structure build. But this double wide here that Jade was talking about. The good thing about these is, is it's double, right? So you go up one side and go to the other. Right? So you block them both off. Somebody raids one side, you could always take the loot down the other side. Or if you're going to PvP them, you know, s go on the, op the opposite side and go over. Kind of like a way to traverse and have a tandem in between the PvP action, that way you can kind of gather some stuff on the other side to uh, counter raid the opposing uh, squad trying to get into your stuff. But like, each building is unique in their own way. The single builds, obviously, that's more of a... 
I don't know, that's more conducive to your s s a squad functioning properly compared to the the double wides. At least that's in my opinion because I don't want anybody to be able to come up over the roof on the other side and clap me, you know what I mean? And it yeah, not until you're like big enough. That's just, yeah, that's kind of my spe yeah, and it co And it costs a lot to, you know, rope all this stuff up. Yeah, even if you're going to internal. Like, mm -hmm. if you've done any building to to any level quickly. Uh, yeah it adds up stupid quick yep and just to give you kind of like an idea of what's going on in the local area like he was saying you definitely have all these residential areas down here the water wells just up the hill there and I mean you're near Ch Cherno so you can definitely uh, loot it up, bring it back. And once you get those cars on, uh, operational, you'll be good, you know? But this is just kind of yeah. like one of those locations that we wanted to point out. Again, you know, I've I've covered multiple uh, base locations for squads, solo players, and stuff like that with Jade. And this is kind of a real, you know, hidden gem. A lot of people just see these apartments and are like, oh. It's empty, cool. But re realistically, man, when it comes to the big squad and end game stuff, these are the type of structures you're going to go after. With 1.5 coming out with the vaulting and stuff like that, guess what? Even if you could vault over player walls, when you put those walls inside the uh, entrance of these buildings, you can't even you couldn't even vault over it if you tried because it goes up to the roof practically. Yeah. But yeah, this Super is, hot. Yeah, this is a, a prime location. Look forward to seeing us build up in one of these nice apartments. And make sure you uh, keep in mind that this is what a big squad is looking for. Another hot base location. Um, and uh, over the next days, weeks, and stuff, was hopefully down a We'll be kind of building up on these as we're playing around with five in other locations so you guys can actually see how this is implemented. But I th we thought we'd cover some some bigger swings on some of these uh, base locations, especially close to the shoreline. And again, this is N-O-V-O. -O. I don't know how to say it, but you can search that in any third-party application or interactive map, N-O-V-O, -O, and it's just above 